We've all seen the viral videos of whales exploding, but I know that's a rare occurrence and I really want to know what happens to the ones that don't explode. Luckily, I did my studying and we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. Today, we're learning all about the decomposition of whales and what happens after a whale passes away. Once a whale passes away, they kind of just float really, but eventually they sink. Now, how long does it take a whale's body to sink? It's not like they come with an anchor, so the time varies. Sometimes it can take a few hours and then other times it can take a few days. It all just depends on the circumstances, really. Just think of it this way. Whales are massive and buoyant. Buoyant basically just means it floats in water. This is mostly due to the blubber that keeps them warm in chilly waters. When they pass away, their buoyancy starts decreasing, which increases the density of their bodies. Eventually, their bodies become denser than the water. And once their bodies become denser than the water, gravity starts doing its thing, pulling the once majestic giant whale's body all the way down to the sea floor. Now, once this process begins, it's kind of like the dinner bell for the sea. Everyone is ready to feast. First in line are usually sharks. They're not too picky, so they go straight in on that blubber and soft tissue. But it's not just sharks that get in on this feast. There's a lot of scavengers that get in on this feast, like hagfish, lobsters, prawns, shrimp, and even octopus. Now, once the whale falls to the bottom of the ocean, a whole different process comes into play. These carcasses are used for more than just a quick meal. Once they've been stripped of all their insides, they become more or less just bones, which is extremely useful for a various amount of organisms in the deep blue. Whale bones are like a gold mine down there. They create a unique and intricate ecosystem. A lot of different organisms can live around these parts. First, we have the bone-eating worms, otherwise known as Osidex. Some call them zombie worms, but really, they're, they're important. These little creatures are kind of like nature's recyclers. They have special roots that allow them to penetrate bones and then extract that nutrients. Without these worms, the whale's bones would kind of just lay around and be useless. But they turn them into a source of food and shelter. We also have microbes and bacteria that pretty much break down bones and do the same thing, giving other animals opportunities to get into those bones to pull out more nutrients. Next on the list, we have snails and crabs. Usually not crabs like this, but small crabs. This picture just looked dramatic, so I had to show you guys. After the microbes and the bacteria do their thing, it's time for the bone-eating snails and the small crabs to move in. They feast on the softer part of the bones and continue that recycling process. It's like a never ending buffet out there. Now here is where it gets really cool. As the bone eating creatures feed, they release essential nutrients and minerals into the water. These nutrients act as a fertilizer for the ocean and they promote growth for plankton, which are at the bottom of the food chain. You know, plankton feeds small fish and then small fish feed large fish and it just goes on and on. These structures at the bottom of the ocean become home for a lot of different animals, including smaller fish and invertebrates. They kind of act as a little apartment for helpless sea creatures. The wild thing is these bones can last for decades, especially in deeper water. For some reason, it preserves them. It's like the life of a majestic whale just keeps on giving. And that is pretty much the process of a whale's life afterlife hope you guys enjoyed and learned something while watching please hit that subscribe button and like a couple videos it helps the page a lot hope you guys are doing great and as always guys peace and love baby